So the way that I do this is we technically already have the caliper side right there. Yes. This part's done. We're not yes, going to be concerned with what goes outside of it right now. And then on this other side, Derek, right here. Uh, okay. I just take a random space that I'm just going to leave the random spacer we were using earlier. Just going to leave that in. And this is short enough because what I need to figure out now is the spacing between this spacer and the inside of the axle plate and then the caliper to there, blah, 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 blah. Well, you'll see. Um, and then we'll figure out what our outside spacers need to be. And remember when I did, um, remember how I had you set that? Yeah. This is why. Because this goes right in. Oh, wait. Do you have a, oh, there was something for that. No, this one, there was Oh, wasn't that goes it? on that. Yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Okay, let's talk about that. So on this axle has a lip that's machined down, and that is the width of there. Some of these are only three quarter, or they're bigger, but so this goes all the way in, which means you don't have to use uh, a wrench on this bolt because this is locked in. Oh, and this side has a... Yeah, it has yeah, come one. over here. And then this side has a spacer that's way too tight. So that's not good. We need to, we need to actually get that out and machine this down. Here's your adjusters, which we need that out of our way. This should be able to move back and forth. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think this has to be altered as much as you still have powder coat mm -hmm. on the inside of here. So we need to clean that off so that this stuff has more play because obviously you need to be able to move your wheel to set the tension on your um, chain. So we're gonna abort what we were just doing. Let's get that fixed because that's important for the rest of it. So we got this dude out. This guy is the same. So I don't know if you can see that. See the flats and then around. And those flats are what's supposed to fit in here so that this can go back and forth. And right now, we just had to like use some force. Brute force. <laughs> Real force. So definitely doesn't fit. Um, I think it's just the powder coat is in there that's make, taking up the space. So we can either use a Dremel. I could use like a more aggressive tool, but I don't actually want to take any of the metal down yet. Or if you wanted to, you could definitely use a file, which I should, you know, if you were taking metal, this is flat. It should be a flat file, but a little rat tail just to like get rid of the... Um, the powder coat will be fine, but I'm going to use my Dremel and like a little barrel sander. And that should make it pretty simple. Tweaker's favorite tool. <laughs> I'm not a tweaker, but... You're tweaking in here, dude. People would think I was with some of the things that I do. It's okay. Tweakers get shit done. Might not be... <laughs> Done right, but, or actually ever done. So it's a new project. Okay, quests, they call them. Tweaker quests. We'll back off, man, see, that's really nice that these are threading the way they are. Sometimes these just do not want to move. So being able to move my finger is nice. It's all brand, it's all brand new, dude. Oh, yeah, Some cream yeah, puff sure. stuff, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this this plug setup fucking sucks. I fight it all the time, but I don't do anything about it because I'm I don't know. I'm not even lazy. Alright, let's check it. 
so close. So honestly, I think this needs attention. Is that like kind of see it's fitting in right now? Mm -hmm. But it's not willing to move and the powder coat's gone. And this is not our problem, the frame is. So, which we gotta do the same thing over here, but I'm just gonna focus on that part. So we'll get ourselves a flat file now. And I can see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can see where some of the powder coat's still in all the little grooves. Cause this was just like, these plates were probably plasma cut or maybe they're laser cut, but there's a lot of imperfection. So I would just file when you're finding cross hatching. So changing will cut stuff faster. And then you also want to make sure, you know, you're staying pretty flat. This is just not as crazy. It's not as crucial as like other stuff, but it is nice to try to stay flat. So I'll do a little cross hatches. And this is pretty common with fresh bikes that you gotta clean them up. And actually, this does have some issues on it. I lied. That was like a little nubbin. something flat. This is where tweakering comes in, man. You gotta get it real good. <laughs> it's also where you just beat the shit out of your fingers. Little thing things. Yeah, that's how you destroy yourself. And Chrome doesn't like to file, but the damaged part that was on there that was fighting us, this will just get rid of any little little nubbins. Still a little bit tight at one end, but look at that. Fits pretty good. I am, because I'm a nice guy, we're just gonna make sure that the top, just gonna do a one little quick little pass. And I did not take enough material, because I can't take a ton of material off of this. That's where in like the fabrication world, I had a guy that taught me a lot of stuff that I know. He, his first thing was like, you need to know when to put away an aggressive tool, okay? Cause you will overly chew stuff down. So yeah, use, you know, a nice freaking tough guy grinder and all that stuff, but know when to be able to put that tool away and start digressing into a file, you know? And filing's a bitch. And also having good files is really helpful um, I'm probably due for some new ones because otherwise you're just, you're not doing anything but just rubbing metal up against metal. Let's check that again. See, now we have like pretty much full movement, dude, and that's great. You really shouldn't be coming this far out when like we, when we, this will be another thing I'm going to probably reindicate. Like we don't have a chain today to put, to mount the chain on Derek's bike. Um, Right? Do you no, own a chain? I don't have one. I do. Do you want to just buy one from me? I'll buy one from you. So I'm going to sell Derek a chain so we could do the chain too and really actually finish this off. It's probably going to be a long video, but there are nuggets in here. That's what we talk about. Kind of got to hang around to get the nuggies, dude. There's some diamonds There's, in the rough, people. Um, when I go to set the wheel and the chain, I want to kind of start further up because chains stretch, especially if they're cheap ones, which I'm going to sell you a cheap one. Hell yeah. Uh, all right, so I did the other side because um, remember this side has it too. But what I also did was I made sure that this also worked on the other side because some people like to run their axles hmm. different directions. Like say you have your exhaust comes right here. Having your axle here would suck. Right. It's gonna hit your exhaust. So usually I think everybody goes in this way. I don't know what would be over here, but some people, hey man, there's those fucking hardcores, man, that run that exhaust on the other side, so. Mm -hmm. But now, that goes there, 
we're just gonna for shits and gigs man i don't need to do that it's too much time come on people got shit to do but anyway so both of these are set in the axle they move we're gonna be able to adjust this wheel without a bunch of bindings what you don't want is the wheel to get stuck somewhere and you think you're good and it's not because that didn't have good play classic you're trying to do one thing, you're gonna run into new issues that need to be addressed. Hopefully we don't run into too many more. Okay, bro? No, no, no. Just tap it. You don't just tap it, you literally have to like, you feel oh, your phone yeah. like but vibrate. Then, yeah, you ah. feel your phone like vibrate. See? Yeah. Sorry, I know. I do. This is why I gotta <laughs> hang out with young people, man. <laughs> So here we have the stripper pole. It's not that kind of stripper pole. Cause you need shit if you tried to do that. <laughs> Fucking dad jokes, dude. It's gross. <laughs> Anyways, so I've got my laser level here and I made this pole out of a freaking brake drum and some metal. Cause these are got magnets. It's a little squirrely some work, I'm sure there's guys that have more cool custom things, but what we wanna do right now is we're gonna laser in. We know this is the center of the tire, right? Like it even has the arrows. I think we had this discussion in a prior video. Yes, we did. Didn't we? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to laser up on here and then have it center up on the, on the seat post guy, but then also center up here. And if I know if I'm centered here, then I can just move this wheel, which actually, we're gonna need to now. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Derek. Go ahead and lift the bike up a little bit so that the wheel spins. Man, you got it right the first time. Good job, dude. Okay, that's good. So now that the wheel's up, we know we can move it back and it can go side to side. And then you got a little rock in there, dude. Um, and since we kind of have I want to be like kind of straight, like get the axle good so that we can always kind of come back. So all you have to do every time is just push the wheel forward and we're feeling pretty good, which I'm not gonna lie, like that is always kind of been a bitch. You never know. You hope all their stuff's right. Um, I just kind of, there are ways to measure, like we can go center to here to there. Let's just, play around so I'm gonna just pretend like I know where center is on this nut because I'm just gonna eyeball it and right now it's all just eyeballing anyways so I'll go from there to center there tighten that up all right now let's go back up I'm gonna base it off this side so now I'm just gonna take this off and out of my way so that I'm not as hard of an angle and then let's center. And so that obviously needs to go back. Here we go. Let me just double check. I feel like I like it here. Yeah, that's center. See, they got the actually the nub and boom, perfect. Now, I mean, that's how I'm doing it. <laughs> Are you okay with that, Derek? I'm fine, dude. I mean, I still, I think right now, so I would imagine we should hopefully have the wheel pretty straight. Once again, this isn't, I don't know if you know this, this isn't NASA. This is uh, my garage um, out here in the hills of California. <laughs> oh, I'm over tightening, dude. I don't want to do that. Don't do that. We want to pinch the frame. We want an accurate measurement here. So now we're going to use a laser. I believe that we're going to have too much light, which is something that Derek flattered me with. He goes, dude, you're lighting. Lighting's so important. I have lights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. I feel like I almost want one more over here so I can get a better. Because, man, it's, being able to see is so important. But it's probably going to drown out our dude, and we'll probably just do a speed up thing here because this is probably not, I don't think we're gonna be able to see it. I think we will. 
I'm gonna have to turn some lights. Uh, we yeah, can kind of so. see it. I'll turn some lights off though, so you guys can have more fun. And so when I do the laser right now, what I'm doing first, don't worry about the wheel. Don't worry about it. What I wanna do is I wanna get this laser set up to where it's centered right here. And then right there, I don't know, maybe this is probably accurate enough, but like, once again, it's just eyeballing. If this wheel is slightly off to one way or the other, you're probably gonna be fine. There's all other kinds of weird stuff that can throw a bike off. But the better we get this now, the, you know, you can ride with no hands and may stand on the seat and be that kind of cool person. But anyway, so I'm gonna start here and here, and that's all I care about. Because if I know if I'm straight here, then I'm straight going back and then I'm gonna move the wheel to where it needs to be. This thing's blinking. So if I center up right there, I'm slightly off over there. Oh, you know what might actually be smart? I should pause for just a quick second. Actually, we don't need to pause. Um, let me do a level, make sure the bike's level. Let's just see what our bench looks like. So our bench, which, so my floor is not gonna be level. We actually did the concrete in here. And it's, I saw the dudes that did it, so I know it's not perfect. It's all over the place, but anyways, I should have this adjust, but what I do is, so say here I am, this is showing that it's like this. So like that, I'm 0.5, so I'm 0.5, I'm half a degree up over here. And once I know that, and this is like, this is where, like other crazy fab stuff that I do, I'll just make everything a half a degree off the other way if I'm trying to be that anal. Um, and I'm usually not, because they call me old Crooked Eye Lex for a reason. <laughs> I mean, not a fucking robot. I don't know. Right. right. This is fine. But we're 0.5 off. It would be nice to know where this is at. This is, I know there's, I just saw a dude and I wish I remembered his Instagram. If I can figure it out, find it, I'll put it, I'll write it down. But I doubt I'm going to. Like, how the hell do we figure out if we're flat here? I like honestly don't know. It's it's such a bitch. But this guy makes this thing that like clamps on, and then you can like test it, do whatever. What I do normally is like we're just gonna try to go off the tranny plate, and let's see where we're on the tranny plate. And that's based if like this little lift is good. And if I gotta move it, we'll just grab little shims and what have you. So I'm just gonna try to go off of the tranny plate here. Point 0.1 degree. We're within tolerance. I'm not oh, gonna yeah. go any further. If it was a degree off, I'd play with it, but it's 0.4 degrees off. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody. Okay, so now we're back to our thing. You want to reach up and dim the lights for us, Derek. Okay, so right now, I'm looking pretty centered there. It sucks when you want to look, you gotta get your head in the way. That is not centered. So, I gotta kinda do, I need to move the thing this way. So I'll just, this part is kind of a bitch. Cause you don't know. Look at the wheel. All right, no, we're not looking at the wheel. We only care about this. So that is really nice and centered. We're good there. And then we're centered up here, which means, right, that, that line should be good. If we look at the tire, which is awesome because it has a center line in the tire, we're not right. So now, dude, you, gotta, you gotta get the footage of this thing getting lined up, bro. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the coolest thing ever. It's gonna be so pretty. Oh, we ran into another problem. No way. Oh no. Did we? Okay, cool. So here, did classic choppering. We ran into an issue. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna turn the lights on. So right now, right? This wheel needs to come this way. And look at what's stopping us. This effing Allen bolt. 
is hitting the axle plate. <laughs> so I can't bring the wheel over. But what we can do is we can put a different piece of hardware in there. Luckily enough, this Allen bolt is kind of tall. So I'm gonna put in a, uh, a hex head bolt. And in worst case scenario, if we got to machine that little hex head bolt down, you know, that whole like an inch is as good as a mile. Um, honestly too, there might, we might even need to, if we want to stick with the Allen. I might even take this off and actually countersink your bracket and have the Allen sit depth into it. Or we might have to machine it to even get the hex bolt down. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to pause and we're going to do a little bit of thinking. I've told you the ideas. Let's see which one sticks. So we pulled the caliper off because this Allen was hitting. Um, we do have some meat in there. So either I should have measured what the spacing was that we needed to get centered. But I mean, it was, I think we still needed like a quarter of an inch. So say it was 250 thou. Um, let's see what this measures. So the gap here is half inch. So that's a half an inch. So we need something that's a quarter of an inch. These are three eighths bolts on there. And the head of a three eighths bolts is less than a quarter inch. So I think for right now, we're just gonna throw this bolt in there and see if and that also is an Allen plus a lock washer. So um, hence what I was like saying earlier, we're like, man, it could run into stuff, the caliper stuff run in and like, cause the hub is pushing the brake caliper out too far. Technically we're up against that. I didn't think that we would have that issue, but we are. The cool thing is, is we're at the right place to address that. Oh, I, that was dumb what I was just doing there at first. So to break this loose, cause like, yeah, that's really hard. Use a little bit of leverage, put this down. I have this and now I just go, my fat ass, boom. I didn't actually use my ass, that was all arm. <laughs> <coughs> but anyways, so we can see our difference in height. Hopefully that clearances it out it still might get in the way because when this was hitting down here, this still has some frame right there, which, you know, if this was like a fresh, like, like this has already been powder coated all that, like say if this was still the raw frame, we can go in there and we could sand that part down and, and that could still be the case. And you gotta put a little bit of black paint, but get that flat cause this bar sticks out a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is we're just gonna throw this dude in, but I think that there's some importance here. There is. So when this bolt's in there, it goes to there. If I put this in there, oh my God, it's still perfect. Fuck yeah. It kind of, is sticking past, but what you don't want is this there because there's a rotor there. So this is where there's just like, uh, there's so many little variables and people wonder, you know, back when I owned a shop, they're like, why'd that cost so much? It's just putting the, I'm like, because I ran into like 15 other problems to get it. So anyways, I think we got that safe enough. We're just gonna go ahead and throw this dude in there and keep moving on with our program. Hopefully this works. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to take it out again and um, uh, we'll have to do some machining on the bracket itself. That's still gonna interfere. Also, you don't wanna squeeze the frame in because you already don't even have the freaking clearance, Clarence. All right. Okay, 
All right, man. Wish us luck, people. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we didn't get too off here. I'm just going to leave. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay. Wow. That was a bit. <laughs> so we're centered up. And yeah, dude, I don't know if you want to show the people your clearance. Oh, I, I, I did. <coughs> Got in there. So that so did that it. This will have plenty of space to move all the way back. It's not going to hit anything. So that is awesome. Now, the fun part is we got to make sure right now that's, that the bearings and the or the spacers that we pre put in there we want to make sure that they're in all the way and, and somewhat setting up the bearings what i'm going to space in right now will still jesus i got a freaking laser beam in my face <laughs> um uh you know there's you can still squish the frame a little bit and it's going to when it goes to set everybody up real nice and tight but you want to know make sure initially that you've already got everybody pushed pretty tight so that you don't make a measurement and then when you go to tighten the wheel actually it was too short and it just pinches in on itself um so those are feeling pretty good that's good um back to the calipers we'll do this side because it's easier so now what i do is i just take so i do have other like crazy little tools that these little T measuring things, but I'm just gonna do this. This is how I usually always do it. Even though I'm slightly at an angle, I know these aren't accurate, but once again, it's like, it's not that crazy of a deal. Um, maybe I'm teaching you guys bad habits right off the bat. But so remember my measurements from the inside of there to there, that's the only thing we need spaced. And I think this is it. We've got a, uh... damn, that's crazy. 750 thousandths like actually that's what i have damn so that's a three quarter inch spacer right the spacer that's in there was this number and now we're going to add the spacing i just did so that our overall spacing okay. 1.640 yeah mm -hmm. So that's gonna be our main spacer for number one over there. Man, I'm sorry guys. I feel like <laughs> whatever dude, I don't know if this is making sense, but we're gonna keep rolling. So luckily we got this long boy. So now that we know what that one spacer needs to be, after I've confused the shit out of everybody, <laughs> 1.64, once again, I'm usually not doing this with anyone around. So it's just me. And I usually get pretty fucking confused <laughs> and redoing shit. So now we know that's our full spacer. I already know it's it. Oh, now we actually want to go measure the other side too. So we know this is the left side, which is pretty clear as day. And it needs to be 1.640. And I'll go part the part off we don't need. This other side now, don't bump our pull, Derek, is super thin. We do not need a lot of spacer there. So this will be interesting to get. And really, oh, you know what? Let's use our feeler gauges, dude. Dude. We're going to use our feelers. Which honestly, if I would have put a longer spacer there, one that was like short enough to use feelers, like that might be a trickier way to get a more accurate measurement than like me doing my thick caliper that's all crooked. And But I don't want people tracking straight down the road. Need a little bit of fun. And a bunch of dudes are going to start doing videos now on how to fucking do this better than I do it, which is good. Improve on what I'm doing. 
There it is. So that's our space. Then get it in, boy. Now we can measure that out. Which honestly, I think it's gonna be a washer. Oh. Like that's what I would usually just go find a washer and put it in there, a three quarter inch washer. Mm -hmm. Cause that's probably what it's gonna be. So this guy is 80 thousandths. Ah, uh, you know what? And the only reason why I kind of want to do like a washer is because, um, or some kind of a thing is because like if I cut this out of aluminum and I cut an 80 thou thick little dude out of aluminum, it's going to be just pretty soft and it might just get blown out because it doesn't have a really thick wall. I'd rather use a washer you know, that gives it more of a bigger wall. And just for trying to get it in there, dude, you're gonna be like trying to line everything up when you take the wheel in and out. All right, let's go to the washer bin. Nice, you just go the whole time. Gotta get the steers back in the downstairs shop. If you ever wondered when you're watching the videos why we're always in different places, because this shop's underneath my house. And that one's the garage. And we don't put cars in. Uh, I'm gonna go there. We're gonna go to the fridge and pull out and stuff right now. You want the 45 parts and try to sell shit? You spend it in that for sale. Woo! Sounds funny. So you get the fridge and fire out there, dude. Not for sale. 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 Not it's too thick. Dude, it's 10 thousandths over. <sighs> we're gonna just, so now, and it's it's a chrome boy. So what we're gonna do, let me just make sure. Ooh, what's this? Maybe this one is a little thinner. Dude, 80 thousandths. Holy crap, we got it. No shit. We got it. But what do we gotta do? Cause this is not correct. That is, uh, a little over 60,000. So this would have been for like half inch. So we'll go put it in a lathe. We're going to bore it out. We lost it. We it's, it's gone. It's gone uh, forever. It's gone forever. My water system in there. All the, all the jammers. All the good stuff. You can see my tank get you. Don't, don't, don't. don't. <laughs> I was practicing painting. <laughs> but I know what I want to do, but I was using all the wrong stuff and I'm not very good at it. But I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn. And then you guys know that bike. You gotta, look, at, look at how special Derek is. Move the freaking. Yeah, he's gonna give it to me for free. Move the Primo out. Okay, let's go right to the lathe. Just bore this thing out. The lathes have little grooves. And that kind of centers it and holds it. And you kind of can't go like extra crazy tight. We go tight enough. And now we need a boring. Oh, you know, all I need is a. So you might think, why not just grab a three quarter inch drill bit, which I have. The reason I'm not going to do that is because with that drill bit's pushing on that, the chances of that washer not just doing this. So I got to go in and take, I've tried. And next thing you know, bah, 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 and you got your, yeah. Not pretty. Not pretty. I know you guys like to see that, but we're not going to do that. So now with the boring bar, oh yeah, this is a boring bar. It's very boring. So boring. Loosen that up. Cause what you want to do is you got to get pretty much to center and then go up a little bit. Once again, I'm not a classically trained machinist. I'm just a freaking redneck machinist. 700, that's cool. We're gonna run it. Hopefully this goes well. Make sure you got your safety glasses on. Your sleeves are back. You want to just come up and touch it? Quarter, because no sense in it being like crazy tight because it doesn't make that big of a difference. 
we're like right at three quarter. I want to take, I want to take a little bit more. A little more. They don't need the kind of tightness on there. Go. There's our new custom fab precision machined washer spacer. Burr on it. And the cool thing too is it's steel. It's steel, so it, it'll still scrunch, but it won't scrunch that hard. And it's got zinc on it, so it won't rust. And but that burr is kind of nice. trying to knock the burr off without taking too much of the other shit. All right. Oh, we need to make this other spacer. Do this all in one, in one, one, one take. One take. One take. One take Drake. One take Drake, yeah, okay. So now we're gonna get rid of the boring bar. We don't need that. And dude, this is cool. This is still sitting here from the last time you were here and we did your, I don't think I did anything. Oh, no shit. I haven't done any work since then. So we're gonna fire this up. I already made my scribe, so I know I'm good. But, Captain Confident over here will always screw stuff up because he's thinks he's good. Let's make sure that that scribe 1.64 and that's what it was supposed to be. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go like this. Tighten that up so I know that. And then I'm going to fire it up. And I'm going to put a little bit more accurate. And I'm trying to part off just that end. Squeeze over and grab my Allen so I can catch the drop. Okay, there's that. And then last but not least, a little bevel. Because we already know the spacer is going to be cherry. shine it up for you yeah like i did last time yeah whatever dude i think you told me behind the scene that you didn't really care no so no sense in doing it doing more than the man wants clean off that inside we got ourselves a nice little chamfered edge let's freaking reset this wheel dude man I don't know how many calipers I've dinged up doing that. <laughs> um, okay, so we're just gonna pull this out real quick. This is the fun part. That is that spacer we did first. That one stays. I'm gonna pull this out. This spacer over here was just for referencing because now we got our new dog. That goes in there. Now this is where everything's gonna start getting real nice and tight. Okay, there's that. So what I do when I'm pushing in now, I'm ready to go. I just get my axle right till she pops through. So I know everything's there. Right till it turtles. Right until it turtles. <laughs> We're turtling, dude. Hopefully that'll still get on there. Thank you, sir. That extra hand. This is this is that fun guy. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and get the axle through a little bit more. So 
So the axle is kind of cool. Now it's holding the brake caliper and then we just slip this here washer in. Look at that, we got a little bit of play, which is all good in the hood, dude. Got a little bit of play. Cause the thing will shorten on itself. There, uh, there we go. There's that. There's that, that. We're gonna go this now. Now I'm gonna tighten it for realsies. Oh, that was not through yet. Okay. Let's tighten that up. Oh, we only need one crescent wrench. I'm sure there'll be some people out there mad about my crescent wrenching. I'm gonna strip my shit. I'm gonna freaking dole it out. This is a damn little bolt in my way. For sissy bar. Remember, you only gotta do one side because the other head have those flats, which that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go like, I'm gonna throw some, throw a little bit of heat on there, dude. <sighs> Barely moves. Cause we're touching the ground. We're touching. Dude, I feel like that gapping even got better. There it is, man. And it's a brand new rotor, so you're gonna feel like it's got weird dragging, but you gotta imagine too, you already got pads that are touching. These haven't been like, you're gonna, like, gonna feel the holes and stuff. But that spins good, that's under torque. That spins pretty sweet. Nice, dude. And you also have brand new seals that are touching the spacers that are stationary. So you see how your seal moves? Cause I used to trip back in the day and I'd be like, man, this thing should just like be like a bicycle tire. But like you actually have other things that are touching and moving. So that's good. Um, the real, like whatever, we gotta do the laser again and make sure it's straight, which we'll do. Um, I don't think we gotta keep putting you through that. I mean, I think it was just really how we get to where we're trying to get to, right? So now the next phase is, now let's look at the sprocket to the transmission, which Derek and I will do after we laser sight it in, because the laser sighting takes forever and ever. So <laughs> let's laser it real quick, and then we'll go into the sprocket. We'll be back. Yeah. What are you doing, Alex? Making things perfect. All right, so we're lasered in. I say it's perfect. Derek says it's perfect. The laser pretty much says it's perfect. Chopper perfect. Chopper perfect. Is the Saint NASA, but that is this this Moefa should track pretty damn good. We're going to just we're going to end it there. Um I think we got it, right? The wheel's spaced. Hopefully that's helpful to our people. Um with the brake caliper. We got to run into a couple of problems that we had to address, which is always good to see that like, no matter, like every time it's different, that's like the world of custom. You never know what you're gonna run into and whatever, but you know, that's why I have all these crazy ass tools. Cause like what a bike is at the end of the day is a pile of problems that you need to solve. <laughs> Start. That's my rant. That's Just how I'm gonna do end it. this. Just do it. Derek's like, shut it down. <laughs> I right, we're good.